Welcome to the Press Box Show, sponsored by Zeglin's TV and Appliance, spreading their love from the football season to the basketball season. We're glad to have them. I'm Mark Nessler. This is Daniel McCarowitz. For a switch this week, I want to talk about what we knew going in and what we kind of learned after the first Big Six week. Uh, we'll start with Rock Island. When I think of Rock Island, I think of Tyler Hall, mm-hmm. Division One recruit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you saw something a whole lot more uh, impressive, mm-hmm. I think, when he went down to Quincy last week. Yeah, C.J. Neville, junior guard. Uh, right. It was inserted in the starting lineup. There were some illnesses, and Coach Sickle kind of shuffled his lineup to a more guard-oriented lineup at Quincy. Right. And he went... Uh, Eight for eight, I think. What, was nine it? for nine from nine the field. For nine. Okay. He had nineteen points, or excuse me, it was eight or no, nineteen had, points. N- nine for nine. He had nineteen points, shared game high honors with Tyler Hall, and and then four for five the next night. Yes, so and, quite a weekend. And he now all but one of his shots were within two feet of the basket. They were high percentage looks, but it's one thing for a guard to take the ball to the rim, and Rock Island did a good job of distributing, but you still have to hit shots. Right. There's no such thing as a one hundred percent shot, even a slam dunk. And his last shot was a really nice baseline jumper, about an eight-foot baseline jumper. He's really got that, that ability to to take it to the hoop. Correct. And I mean, he's really not an outside shooter. I think he has that kind of talent, mm-hmm. but he really doesn't need it. What would he what, have Tyler Hall? Tyler Hall, Jason hit, Jones you know, can hit 60% the outside. on the threes. And, and he's a nice compliment because as a guard, he's kind of a slasher. Right. Not overly big. But he's a slasher. He can score in different ways. And and really, Rock Island doesn't need uh, – yeah, you'd like to have some perimeter shooters, but the higher percentage looks, you want to yeah. get those. And Rock Island did a really good Sorry. job at Quincy of doing that and, and hitting shots. They shot 65% from the field at Quincy, which is, you know, yeah. pretty, pretty good number. Play. Yeah, and a pretty now, good Rock number. Now, Rock Island hosts Alleman mm-hmm. on, on Friday night. And uh, at first glance, you'd say, you know – uh, mismatch, but I think, and I'm not saying that all of them, in, You're right. that it's not, but what I'm saying is from Tuesday night mm-hmm. playing against Sterling, I would have thought Sterling would have handled them yeah. after beating Geneseo. Geneseo has got, you know, a lot of talent yeah. there. Uh, so, but Altman showed us some stuff yeah. that, that you were at that game as well. Allman was down double figures in, in the first half. Uh, turning point may have been Patrick Rangel's technical. They started playing better <laughs> out there, but the big <laughs> thing about coach. it, was Alleman, this was a telling sequence. Alleman's up five in the fourth quarter. They they work some clock, take about 40 seconds off. Ivan Morrow takes a questionable three-pointer they miss. Sterling gets the ball, score five points on a possession. They get a three, or they get a they get an and one and a bucket. Okay. So it's tied. Alleman's down, and you know, Alleman comes back, takes the lead. Alleman's down again. They came back. Game-winning shot by Ivan Morrow. That, to me, was a telling sequence because Alleman could have folded. Right. They could have lost by nine points. Instead, they found a way to make plays. And that's my whole point. When mm-hmm. I saw Alleman play at Brimfield, five out of the eight quarters I saw, mm-hmm. Alleman scored one field. Right. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, this is yeah. going to be a long season. I was glad to see them yeah. come back against Sterling. And now that can translate, if not Friday night, down the road, maybe at the Sterling tournament, mm-hmm. into some victories, into some positive uh some positive vibes. And one thing I told Patrick Rangel on Tuesday night after the win is, you know, you know, it's it's an unforgiving league, the Western Big Six is, particularly this season for be- rebuilding. But those Tuesday games, those Saturday games come highly important. And you look at it, Sterling potentially could be an Allman's regional. Yeah, that that yeah. may happen. If you look at that, Sterling's not a bad team. Th- Sterling was 3-0. They had right. just beaten Geneseo. Right. That's, that's a good win. I mean, that's a win for a postseason regional seed there almost because Alleman can at least say, hey, we beat Sterling. That's that's a nice win for Okay, them. so let's go to the, the probably the biggest game on mm-hmm. tap Friday night, and that's Galesburg at Moline. I think of Moline, I think of Tyler Biscontin, yeah. returning gunner, uh, three-point shooter, mm-hmm. uh, veteran leadership. But here again, uh-huh. Moline has that that – you know, kind of a surprise, yeah. although I did kind of call it last week. Right. <laughs> Basala. Basala had it. I saw him at Ottawa. He had a really nice performance um, that he wasn't living on the outside. A lot of his shots were within 10 he's, feet. He's yeah. got a good three-point touch. And, and he did, hit a, he did hit a three-pointer. But the key now, and Coach Jeff Schimmel talked about this week, is you know, he's going to be a marked man on a scouting report. He's yeah, going to be the emphasis, now. focal point of opposing teams. Can a sophomore, can he handle that? Can he ex- handle that role? Can he still put up 20 a night when other teams are going to be doing their best to defend him? And that's where I think the Tyler Biscontine factor comes in because if they're trying to shut down Basala, Biscontine may be able and to get a And that's where I said time. maybe Basala's kind of a surprise that right. you might not have expected 
after the first week. Yeah. On the flip side, Galesburg, obviously everybody's mm-hmm. eyes are on Grant Gibson. Mm-hmm. Shot at 2,000 points. Yeah. Going to get 20 to 30 points night in, night yeah. out. But what I saw, I covered that game down mm-hmm. in John Thiel uh, against Alleman. Uh, Joe Williams can do an all conference all, guard he, he, as a sophomore right and yeah. then he didn't play as a junior yeah but he did so many things as uh, coach reynolds says he can sure fill up a stat sheet yeah. he had 16 points he had five steals yeah he had five assists he had six rebounds uh you know he was every defensively yeah. he was you know ball hawking i think he is a key to uh galesburg having a, a, a really great season well the galesburg with meeker and gibson you kind of know what you're gonna Meeker's get they need to have one. other and, and especially if they can a third guard would help, but also an interior player. Six seven you know. Thompson. Yeah. Uh, you know, and 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 he, you know, Allman's lack of height was right. exposed right there. Yeah. Uh, and if anybody has any height, then then that rock that Allman's got yeah. some trouble with that. Uh, but he needs to be. He had a great yeah. Thompson had a great first five minutes, and then he kind of like yeah. faded out for the rest of the game. He needs to have that kind of consistency mm-hmm. throughout. The other game on the docket Friday night is he had uh, Quincy yeah. uh, coming to the Panther Den mm-hmm. against United Township, uh, both trying to get their first win. And and, and what was weird is six, this is UT's home opener. Yeah, yeah. I forgot. I was, I was like, wow, they haven't played a home game yet. Yeah, crazy. For, for UT, you know, Lamont Mitchell, I kind of know where you're going to get. Uh, UT's guards with Webb, and and I hope I say this, Meski, I, Meski, Meski, I never can get it right. And, and Taylor Lopez, those are kind of the one, because UT, I think, can be a very, very formidable team if their guard plays really right. good, because they do have athleticism in, in, the, in the front court, but if their guard play, I mean, those are three guys that you can kind of look at. All of them can score. All of them can can distribute the basketball. It's just a case of can they all be on the same page together at the same time? Okay, so what can Panther fans expect from Quincy? Because uh, you saw them. Quincy what... is going to live more on the perimeter. They shot the ball very well against against Rocky from the perimeter. Took overtime. Or, or no, no, or the, close to overtime. Close to overtime. Yeah, it was, that was, it was, eight was eight down, game, yeah, down to the it seconds. It was. I think with with Quincy is can you force them to take bad shots? Can can you extend your defense? So they're want to they're going to want to take shots. Can you extend their defense and force them into you know, low percentage shots? Because Quincy doesn't have any interior. Their their guards are okay, but the key is you know forcing them to get uncomfortable. I just mentioned line. overtime to see that look of surprise on your face because I, you know <laughs> we talked that that about that beforehand. It was uh, a it was an eight point victory. Eight point victory. So it was really <laughs> close to overtime. <laughs> You know, I think that's a great <laughs> spot to wrap it up. Thanks again to Zeglin's TV and Appliance. We we apologize for my uh, uh, fault okay. ball in the overtime, okay. but you it's know, right. hey, you know, got to end it that way. <laughs> we'll see you next week.